Alright, so we just saw how to integrate this, and the reason we could do it, I guess, was because it only has linear factors in the bottom. So they're not distinct because we have a square here, and we saw how to deal with that. But uh, the next example will be one where we don't, we can't factor the bottom into, into linear factors. Because as you may remember, we can't factor all polynomials because some quadratic polynomials have complex roots. So here's the example we'll be looking at. So as with all of these problems, we're going to start by factoring the bottom, and in this case it's not too hard. And the reason this problem is different from the one before, because this has imaginary roots, and we don't want to deal with any of that in this class. So instead, uh, there's a different way we can divide this up. So the x on the bottom contributes the same as before. We're going to guess that we can divide it into a term like a over x plus, and then the second term is a little different. The top we're going to allow to be linear. So we're going to guess that we can turn it into something like this. Um, a over x plus bx plus c over x squared plus 3. So what exactly are we solving? Let's get a common denominator. We get ax squared plus 3 plus bx plus c times x all over x times x squared plus 3. Now Combining all of this, the x squared term is a plus b, the x term is just cx, and the constant term is 3a. So just like in the previous problems, this numerator has to be the same as this in order for this to be true. So the coefficient of x squared has to equal the coefficient of x squared right there. So a plus b is 1. Coefficient of x has to match the coefficient of x there. So c is negative 1. And here we have 3a has to be 6. So these three equations aren't too difficult at all because we're already given c. We see that a is just 2. And then from this, b equals 1 minus 2. So b is negative 1. So the thing we started with is equal to 2 over x plus negative x minus 1 over x squared plus 3. Now the question is, how do we integrate this? Well, the first part is easy. Uh, it's just 2 natural log absolute value of x. And then the next thing we want to integrate is, is this. So maybe let's just remember what we've done so far and work on this one separately. <laughs> so this I'm going to split up into two integrals. I'll have x over x squared plus 3 plus 1 over x squared plus 3 dx. With this piece, I can use a substitution, and with this piece, I have to turn it into one of those things that'll give me a tangent inverse. So 
So let's see, with this piece I'll do u equals x squared plus 3. And then du is 2x dx. So the first integral becomes 1 half du. The 1 half comes from dividing by 2 there, divided by u. And the next piece, I'm going to turn it into something that I can uh, use tangent inverse with. So I'm going to factor the 3 out of the bottom. And so I get 1 plus, and let me write this in kind of a funny way. Factoring the 3 out, I would have to divide by a 3. If I turn it into x over square root of 3, all of that's squared. Well, this piece is 1 half natural log absolute value of u. u in this case is this positive thing. So I don't need absolute values. And then this piece, I have 1 third. And the way you deal with this is I'll do a different substitution. u equals x over root 3. And in that case, du is 1 over root 3 dx. So I still have that there. Plus 1 third integral root 3 du over 1 plus u squared. And this is just root 3 over 3 tangent inverse of u, which was x over root 3. And I guess I'll put a plus c on all this. So that gives us this integral. <laughs> so recall what we had before. We had 2 natural log x, and then the rest was negative of this. And that's the answer.